Wars. In recent years, we have served as a venue for ecumenical and other faith groups from the National Unitarian Assembly to Buddhist teachers who packed the house, so to speak, with mostly 500 young adults on a Friday night, and we, uh, and we continue to offer space to the Muslim community for their Friday prayers. And so we are delighted this day to open our doors for this ecumenical gathering the installation of Atlantic School of Theology's ninth president, the Reverend Neil Sanford Bennett. This is a historic moment in the life of the school and indeed for the region. Her honor, Dr. Mayan Francis, chair of the ASC board, will be the first African Nova Scotian Canadian to install president of the Institution for Higher Learning in Atlantic Canada. And so we congratulate Mayan. Another burst for Nova Scotia. Today we want to acknowledge also some special guests who are with us today. Uh, first, in Neil's family, who is sitting right here in the front row to my left to your right. From who there, his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Jim and Laura Bennett, his wife Sharon, and his children Jack and Claire, and sister Kristen Helen, and one of them is Jackie Foote. So, welcome, family. If I've got anyone, you're welcome as well. <laughs> And in the Chancellor area are actually, and I'll go with Mr. Savage, where's our mayor? Is he here? Mr. There he is, Mr. Mayor, and Mike Savage, thank you. Nice to see you here today. Welcome. Also, our esteemed ASD faculty, including the Reverend Dr. Lawrence DeWolf, who will be leaving the school this term to serve as senior minister of Wendview Presbyterian Church of Toronto. So we wish Lawrence good speed. And our preacher today, Mr. Bob Hamm, president of Nova Scotia Power, who's also uh, with the class of 2014. Mr. Steve Moran, past chair of the AST Board of Governors and chair of the Presidential Search Committee. Representatives from our sister institutions, Dr. George Cooper, president of the University of King's College, one of our founding schools of AST. Reverend Dr. Alex Bazard, uh, Provost Queens, Dr. Caroline Jansen, Acadia Divinity College, who's also bringing greetings from Dr. Rayan of the King University, uh, my alma mater. Dr. Ramon Lumpkin, President of Mount St. Vincent University, Dr. Rob Sandro Murray, President of St. Mary's University, and from the Nova Scotia Community College, Ms. Kathy McLean, Vice President of Learning and College Development. Also, we have representatives from our three founding denominations with us, Bishop Don Cutler, Anglican Bishop of Nova Scotia, Prince of Rhode Island, Bishop David Edwards, Anglican Bishop of Fredericton, Reverend Matthew Fuller, President of the United Church Maritime Conference, and the Reverend Michael Walsh, representing Archbishop Anthony Mancini of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Halifax, Yarmouth. Many of you perhaps are aware of our long-standing tradition of matriculation, when formal enrollment into the ASC community takes place, it will normally take place in the fall this time of year at the chapel at one campus, Congo campus, but we're holding it here today as well. So Reverend Dr. Jody Clark will lead us in a, in a brief ceremony immediately following his installation. I hope you'll join me and us in welcoming these individuals to the ASC community. And lastly, a few thank yous. I want to thank some of my four Massey folk, Irene Parks and UCW, and Ian and Richard, uh, and the wonderful staff at AST, Linda, Sandra, Cheryl, and Amy, and all the participants in today's service, including those who created today's liturgy, and Mr. Andrew Kelly, uh, our organist, who's on loan to us, who falls on the Grand Parade uh, in his home church. And I think we have um, another gentleman here. Where is he there? Is he? Yeah. Um, <coughs> calls. I don't know if the rector's here or not, but anyway, I'm sure. Oh, there's a rector right here. Oh, please. Oh. So, a good contingent of St. Paul's, I wonder why. <laughs> and lastly, but not, certainly not least, we are about to go to Marshall um, today's ceremony. You're all invited to gather uh, in the church hall, actually. We have two reception areas in the church hall. One is immediately underneath the sanctuary here, and the other is in this part of the building, the actual church hall. So feel free to mingle around, go you know, from area to area. You know, what you can see in one area, go to the other area. <laughs> and uh, but you're going to enjoy some musicians down there while we have a harvest, we have a 
through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Have you understood all this? 
They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like, a, is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church. Good afternoon. Dear Lord, I pray for understanding and wisdom as I share my reflections this very special day. When preparing for today, I sought the wise counsel of a number of individuals, many of whom are here today, and I'm extremely grateful. One person's advice stood out amongst all others. Jody Clark shared with me a situation where he was preparing to preach at his beloved uncle's parish. So a few weeks in advance of him preaching at his uncle's parish, he visited with his uncle, and he asked him what he thought he should preach about. And his uncle's reply, as he looked up from the newspaper he was reading, was that he thought he should speak about ten minutes. <laughs> that struck me as profound advice, an advice that I will attempt to follow today. A few weeks ago, I was relaxing at the cottage, listening to the radio. Generally, I'm a big fan of the CDC, but this particular afternoon, I found myself yelling at the radio. Okay, I yell at the radio a lot. But the story was about the former CFO of Enron, who is now released from prison, and amongst other things, he occasionally gives lectures on business ethics to business students. <laughs> he was to deliver such a lecture at a Canadian university, but he was stopped by the authorities at the border, refused entry because of his felony conviction. So he had to deliver his lecture by Skype. In fairness, he did the lecture for free. The one question that he is always asked is, what went wrong? By all accounts, he is a decent person, and somehow things just went wrong. He said the problem was that we knew the rules and we worked the rules. I would be of the opinion that they did a bit more than that. But he goes on to say, what we did not do was follow any principles. It is at this point that I'm yelling at the radio, because certainly there are other folks or institutions who could be relied upon to lecture and teach about ethics, business, or otherwise. A few hours pass, and I receive a request from Neo to be a part of this service today. Early in the recruiting process for the search for our new president, someone asked me what qualities I thought our new president should possess. I quickly replied that they must be bold and be able and willing to build bridges. Clearly, I believe that our new president is able and willing to be both bold and a bridge builder which is why I accepted the request to speak here today. As a former student of AST, I have many wonderful experiences and stories that I could share with you that are very positive, life-giving, and full of joyful moments. But instead, I have chosen to share a sad moment with you because it illustrates very clearly the world that we are living in today. One day, a fellow student shared with me how difficult he was finding his experience at AST. In fact, he was so burdened and so busy that he did not have time to pray. It struck me as a very sad day when this thoughtful, faithful servant of God did not have time to pray as a theology student. Now I can assure you as a business person, there are days when I think that I do not have time to pray and reflect 
And I can assure you, these are not good days. I imagine that this is something that we all struggle with. All of us have days where it's difficult to find the time to reflect meaningfully in prayer. The AST's mission is to serve Christ's mission by shaping effective and faithful ordained and lay leaders and understanding among communities of faith. I'd like to ask you to pay attention to the word understanding. Understanding. When I reflect upon this mission statement and the guidance from the readings we've heard here today, I believe that three groups have responsibility in fulfilling the greater mission of understanding. The students, the AST leadership in its many forms, and the greater community. We all have a role to play in furthering understanding. In his epistle, Peter is very clear. We must prepare our whole selves, our bodies, our minds, in order that we may pray. He's also very clear about mission and leadership. There's no grumbling in the service that Peter describes. The leadership that Peter describes is something referred to in the common vernacular as servant leadership. Do not confuse this with servitude. That is not what is being described. This is service leadership rooted in strength and joy. We find equally profound instruction on this matter from the Gospel reading today. I could spend hours on Matthew. Matthew, a disciple of Christ, was a tax collector, most certainly a Jewish Christian preaching to a Jewish community, preaching to a Christian community, preaching to a Gentile community, and a reasonably affluent community. Matthew knew something about being bold and building bridges. Matthew provides us with an example to emulate. He preached and engaged multiple communities, the marginalized communities of privilege and wealth, believers and non-believers. He was bold in his bridge building. Essentially, the parables that we heard today tell us a similar story. The kingdom of heaven is a value that cannot be equated with earthly treasure. In a way, the parables are a commission to all of us as Christians, persons of faith, to discover our understanding of true value and true purpose. All of this activity is to take place on earth, I would suggest, in community. We as Christians, as the AST community, do not, nor are we expected to operate exclusive from the world as we find it. Students, AST leadership in its many forms, the greater community, the founding partners, I would ask that we search our hearts to seek understanding as to how we can fulfill the AST mission, the greater mission of furthering understanding. Many years ago, as a young law student at Dell, I had a classmate who lived in residence at this mystical place called Pine Hill. And I asked him, where is that? And he said, you go down that road, you turn left, and then you turn right, or, or is it left, right? Well, you cross the bridge. You know, it's in that really, really nice, leaky part of town. It's really hard to find. There are no signs or anything. So my friends, I know that under Neil's leadership, and with all of our support, AST will not be hard to find. Let's all be bold and build bridges. Amen. The next hymn is More Voices in More Voices. Three things I promise. Number 176. Number 176.
Many of you know and love AST as well, or even uh, know it better than I do. Uh, AST is the only truly ecumenical, truly integrated ecumenical school of theology in Canada, in the whole country. This means that students from various Christian denominations, along with students from other faith backgrounds and spiritual traditions, and those who are exploring, learn together in the same classes and undertake together on a daily basis to plan and lead chapel services. And AST was formed in 1971, when the three churches we recognize today, uh, infused with the spirit of ecumenism, took, uh, dare I say, a leap of faith in bringing together in one grand theological endeavor the faculties of Pine Hill Divinity Hall, the University of King's College Divinity School, and Holy Heart Seminary. It really was a tremendous act of courage and community. And I want to say how profoundly the university is grateful to you for your foresight and your vision and for your ongoing support and engagement. AST's experience of learning and living in a community which embraces religious and spiritual differences now spans five decades. And we are building on what we've learned in order to advance interfaith dialogue and scholarship. And I appreciate that this group here today, as Trent mentioned, is diverse in terms of faith, in terms of culture, spirituality, and beliefs. And I really do want to thank you so much for being here. The diversity of this gathering represents something of the present and the future of AST. So over the past several months, as I've told uh, people outside of the school that I'm going to work at Atlantic School of Theology, I've, I've often had the question, what do you do there at AST? And sometimes they're asking, what's my particular role at the university? And of course, I'm very challenged to tell them that I'm uh, assuming the role of president. But often the question really means, what does a school of theology do? Or even they're asking, what is the practical use and relevance of a school of theology? So I want to tell you what we do at AST. We shape leaders. We shape leaders who are committed to nothing less than changing the world for the better. We equip them for that momentous and important task in ways large and small, at the level of global issues, community concerns, and personal tragedies and celebrations, AST shapes leaders who feel called to advance a vision of a better communal life for humankind, indeed, for all creation. A vision of a just, compassionate, and sustainable world. We shape leaders by fostering knowledge in three areas. Though wisdom might be a better word than knowledge, we, we shape leaders by giving them the opportunity to develop knowledge in these three areas. And the first is knowledge of self. At AST, students are given the opportunity to more deeply know themselves, to understand more profoundly what they believe and why they believe it. Our goal is for you to have a better appreciation for who you are, where you are coming from, what tradition formed and informed you, and how and why. And at the same time, and this is, this is crucial, this is paramount, we endeavor to challenge you to have the courage to question those beliefs, to think critically and carefully about them, to develop a lifelong practice of stepping back and challenging assumptions and conventional wisdom. The second area of knowledge is knowledge of the other. Actually, I would say knowledge of how to be open to the other. How to engage thoughtfully and reciprocally with one who may have a very different set of beliefs. This takes a commitment to understanding and to appreciation. And it goes 
it goes, may I say, far beyond the sharing of likes or reviews on Yelp. Our goal at ASP is for you to be adept in knowing others in a way needed to create authentic and deep community. The kind of knowing that is the foundation for a collective sense of high purpose and meaning. The third, of course, is knowledge of the divine. Knowledge of God. However you understand the divine, whatever your relationship or experience is with that which is holy and sacred, the important thing is to have that basic stance of openness and to strive for that knowledge. There's a great quote attributed to Albert Einstein, you may have heard it. It's one of those quotes where, you know, there are only two kinds of people in the world, people who use quotes that divide the world into two kinds of people and those who don't. <laughs> Einstein said, there are two ways to live. You can live as if nothing is a miracle. You can live as if everything is a mirror. An ability to grasp something of the transcendence of life is crucial for leaders today. Without it, the world is reduced, subjugated, used, and abused, valued only as a resource rather than embraced and cared for as a home. Without a sense of the sacred in each other, leaders can too easily see objects rather than beings made in the image of the divine. And without a sense of something beyond ourselves, it is too easy to put full faith in our own ability, and that can be both addictive and destructive. Knowledge of self, knowledge of other, knowledge of the divine. At AST, what makes the learning in these three areas possible are our faculty. We are blessed with outstanding scholars and educators right here in Halifax, who are widely known and respected across the country and internationally as thought leaders in their field. I can tell you as a student, former student and alum, uh, I can tell you firsthand that our faculty guide students skillfully and compassionately through this sometimes challenging always rich experience. And so as well as being a service of installation, today's event is equally ASC's fall matriculation service. And this is the moment when we welcome new students, faculty, and staff to the AST community. I myself matriculated in early September 2001, and in a few moments it will be just such a great pleasure for me to uh, who has, as one who has so recently and so warmly been welcomed back to the university to welcome others. We have a number of our new students with us here, and they represent all the new students joining AST this year to study at the university in person and through distance education. By matriculating, you join a community that stretches across Canada into the United States, Bermuda, and the Caribbean. You join a network of people of diverse faiths, spirituality, and backgrounds, and you stand in company with literally centuries worth of technical theological educators and students, and you will stand with those of AST's future. Well. Let us pray. Holy God, in this time and in this place, it is right and good that we give you thanks. Giving thanks, thanks for the ways in which you have brought us together today in celebration of this community. And thanks for your place within this assembly. 
We thank you for bringing us into your presence once more, that together we may mark another important step in the shared journey of the Atlantic School of Theology. We give you thanks for Reverend Neil Bennett and the gifts that he brings to his new role among us. We ask that you will be with him in his leadership as together we step into the future of AST. We ask that you will grant him the wisdom and the courage to not only lead us, but also to follow you in all things. We pray for our school that through our work and mission, leaders will be born and raised up to change our world and to more fully reflect your desire and love and relationship between all people. We give thanks for those among us who are new to the family of AST, for the paths and journeys that have brought them into our midst. We pray that your presence will serve to strengthen and unite each of us. Holy God, we give thanks for all those gathered here and ask that you will continue to be present in our lives and to have us follow you with the integrity, strength, and humility that your gospel message imparts. Make each one of us agents, ambassadors of the love you have poured into this world through the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we now pray together. You would stand. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's a particular issue. 
Joseph Samuel Young. Dorothy Beatrice Miller.
Thank you so much for being here. Your presence and support is, uh, is, is so appreciated by ASC, by our new community members, and, and by me. I want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, and a peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, my Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now in this moment. On this day, every moment of the day. Amen. Our final hymn is I Feel the Wings of God Today in the 625. Strengthened by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Amen.